Hello again, St. Bride's of Reading and Easton. This is Jonathan Lamb, and this video is an instructional video for volunteers. To reiterate, this is meant to make your life easier, so you don't have to pick up the phone, um, you don't have to enter in the information yourself, and everything is logged for safety reasons. If you haven't seen the first video yet that explains the general workings of the site, and shows what the volunteer needs to enter in as well as what they can see, please check that out first for a better understanding of how the site works. Its link is in the description below. The other video explains how to sign up. Um, I'm just going to show you that it's the same for volunteers. The only difference is that you need to enter in your specific volunteer key and that associates you with a team. So you get a unique volunteer key that was sent out earlier this year by email. So make sure you check your email to get that. Um, a note is that if you volunteer more than one year, um, you will need to get a different team, a different volunteer key so that you're associated with the correct team each year. I'm not gonna sign up because I already have an account. Um, I'm gonna sign in with my current account. And you can see it's the same profile page. It just shows your volunteer team name. So for you guys, the important page is not the request page so much as the volunteer page. And so I'm gonna go to the volunteer page here, volunteer page here, and then um, I'm gonna simulate a request from this tab. So this is gonna be the requester. So again, um, I'm just going to create a test fire for the school. Um, enter the message, read the statements, click OK. And you can hear that. Um, but all the volunteers that are currently on duty can see that. So you can see all the information is here. Um, you don't have to answer a phone call, you don't have to write it down. It's here and it's automatically logged. There's the name of the requester, their phone number, their school, their pickup address, their home address, the situation message that they entered, the checkpoints. Um, if you don't understand what the checkpoints are, make sure to watch the first video for an explanation, as well as the names of the two volunteers or the driver and the navigator. So um, you're a volunteer and if you're not currently involved in one of the rides, you can click volunteer and it'll bring you to this page. I'm going to volunteer from these two accounts, um, but I'm just going to leave this one on the volunteer page. So you can see that the mission page or the ride page is pretty much the same as what the um, requesters can see. You can still see the message, the name of the requester, the phone number, the school, the addresses, as well as the name of the two volunteers. We still have the same three tabs. Um, again, we'll start with the chat. Um, just make sure to ch check the chat. Um, for example, if the ride requester has a message such as, I found a ride, uh, no need for a ride anymore, then you certainly wouldn't want to go. So if you see a message like this, just confirm it and then just go through all the checkpoints really quickly so you finish the ride. Um, but this is just a quick means of communication and a way for them to get any pertinent or urgent um, information due to you. Right. Okay. Secondly, the directions, again, is it just a little map? Um, if you click the link, it should bring you to Google Maps with a route. Um, it just might make the, the whole process of finding the route easier. And then the third tab, again, are the checkpoints. Again, this is for accountability and safety. Um, it's your duty to check these off um, as they come. So when you leave the starting place, you should click it off. You should click the first one. And you can see that on the volunteer page, it also shows that you've um, finished the first checkpoint and all the other volunteers and the requesters on that ride can see that um, that's been completed as well. So then when you get picked up, um, you click the next one. When you drop the requester off, you click the next one. 
and when you return to the starting place, you equip the next one. And the ride is finished. So that's about it. Again, you can see that you don't have to answer the phone and you don't have to log anything on paper. It's meant to make your life easier and it also makes the requesters ride easier because they only have to enter in a little bit of information after they sign up. So um, the only other thing I have to add is that when you do see a ride um, and they have any suspicious information like if their name doesn't seem to make sense or um, their address is not within the bounds, uh, make sure to call them. They give, we give you the phone number on purpose. So you can still call them as a safety. If you want to, call them every single time just to make sure it's not a prank call. Um, but that's up to you. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Jonathan Lamb, at jonathanlambdev at gmail.com. Um, if you have any general questions about safe rides, contact the safe ride leaders, Lucas Urban or Michael Kleinwasink. Um, thank you, and again, be safe.